Wahoo, hey, we're gonna talk about disc brakes today. Disc brakes, disc brakes. Okay, so I'm a road guy. I started riding bikes before mountain bikes were invented. And in fact, one of these bikes hanging up here behind me is a museum piece. It's my old Schwinn Typhoon that I converted to a mountain bike when people were starting to make mountain bikes. But I remember being a road guy and popping into my local bike shop. And there were all these new things, these mountain bikes, these fat tire things hanging from the hanging from the ceiling and talking to the bike shop owner, what the hell are these, what? You know, kind of a thing. And and uh, he told us they mountain bikes, this is a new thing, and, and uh, you know, I got the Schwinn Typhoon, who cares, yeah, let's go for a road ride, right? I mean, that was my attitude, so I never really got into mountain bikes. I really like gravel riding, really like cyclocross racing, so I do this off-road stuff, but the full mountain bike thing has not ever really hit me. So, disc brakes entered our cycling sport through mountain bikes, because that was a great place for them. You have trouble stopping on a mountain bike, you might be going down a really, really steep hill, and uh, you know your rims might be all muddy, etc. right? So disc brakes were a great solution on mountain bikes, but being a road bike guy, I never really saw them. And then a few years ago, people started riding out on the road with disc brakes, saying they were fantastic. And they would say things like, you know, if they're good enough for a mountain bike, they're absolutely gonna be good enough for a road bike. That's, <laughs> That's silly. That just doesn't make any sense. Good enough for a mountain bike, making it good enough for a road bike doesn't make any sense because what we do on a mountain bike and what we do on a road bike, by and large, are really, really different most of the time. A mountain bike is gonna be on a trail and they're gonna have a lot of really quick stops where you don't have to drag on the brake very long. So they're gonna slam on the brakes, they're gonna go, they're gonna slam on the brakes. It's rare in mountain biking where you have a long descent where you've gotta be dragging the brake to keep yourself from crashing. But in road biking, we do get that we get long descents like McNeil Canyon or like uh, Mount Evans or like Haleakala or these roads that go down for miles and miles and miles and might be really, really windy. Maybe you've got a big crosswind so you really can't let your speed get above you know, 20 miles an hour because of the conditions, because of how windy it is and so on. So you're gonna be dragging on a brake. And still on touring bikes and on tandems, that's even worse. You, because they've got so much weight, you really will need to be dragging a brake to keep yourself safe on super long descents. So I've been concerned about disc brakes on road bikes for quite a while because I ride in these conditions. I ride a tandem, I ride a touring bike, I ride down long grades where you might have to be dragging that brake. And so it worries me because there have been instances where somebody's riding on that brake, dragging that brake, and they glaze the brake so they don't have very good stopping power, or worse yet, in a hydraulic brake, they actually boil the fluid. So the way any brake works is by taking your energy that you're trying to dissipate, you've got all this energy from movement rolling down the hill, and you're trying to turn that into friction, which in turn turns into vibration and heat and dissipates. Heat is the key, it has to dissipate the heat. And yes, we use disc brakes on cars all the time. Cars go down big, long hills, but Note, if you live in any of the mountain states in the West on these really long grades in Colorado, in uh, the Sierra Nevada and California, uh, Siskiyou Pass near Ashland, Oregon, any of these really long grades, they have runaway truck ramps. And that's because their brakes fail. They're, they'll be going downhill and they'll, they'll glaze a brake, they'll boil fluid, they won't have any brakes, and they've got to ditch their truck and they've got to have a place to do it. So it's true that if you don't have enough mass to dissipate your heat, you're gonna have a problem. This is why I have been concerned about brakes. We're trying to keep these things really, really light. There isn't enough mass to dissipate the heat in these conditions, but I am now riding disc brakes on two of my bikes and I love them. So why am I a convert? I just went through all of the reasons why it's scary and dangerous and so, I've been thinking about this now that I'm riding a couple of bikes with disc brakes and I'm thinking about how many hills have I come down where that would be a problem. The worst one that I can remember was coming down a road called McNeil Canyon in Washington State, Eastern Washington, and it averages over 10%, so it's really steep. You can pick up an enormous amount of speed. And we had about a 40 mile an hour crosswind hitting us, really gusty. So you're riding along and you think you have your balance and the wind hits you and you're off balance, you're trying to gain your balance. So we could not gain speed on this. I was on a bike with cantilever brakes, to be specific, TRP shorty cyclocross brakes. That's what I was riding. And a friend of mine was riding a bike that had disc brakes on it. And as we went down that hill, 
riding the brakes, I would ride the brakes, but then I'd let go of the brakes, and I'd ride on the brakes, and I'd let go of the brakes. I did that a lot going down the hill. And the reality is my friend's discs did not overheat, and I would have been fine if I had discs. And that's probably the worst one that I've been on a, on a single bike. And I've been down other hills like, like Haleakala, and on Haleakala there are some steep pitches, but there's also some less steep pitches. So there were some spots where I had to hit my brakes coming around corners. There were long stretches where I was off my brakes. So the reality is this problem is not going to come up very much. But the other problems that do come up is like riding in the rain and you have brakes. I did a road ride this last weekend on a bike with disc brakes, rained the entire time, I had brakes the entire time. Other people were riding standard road bikes with rim brakes, they did not have brakes all the time. So you look at the conditions and uh, everything has a, a little bit of risk in it. The amount of time that your disc brakes are going to be working better than your rim brakes is something like 99.9% .9 of the time. And occasionally you're going to be in a situation with disc brakes where you're going to have to be thinking about how you're using your brakes. If you're riding a fully loaded touring tandem with disc brakes with no drag brake, there will be days if you're riding in a mountainous area where you may have to think about that. But how much of your total riding miles is on a fully loaded tandem in a mountainous area where you got to stop and think about that. For most people, the number is zero, which means your disc brakes are going to work better than your rim brakes 100% of the time. For some of us, the amount of time that we're on a fully loaded tandem or fully loaded touring bike with disc brakes with no drag brake is going to be some of the time, but a very, very small percentage of the time. Of the millions of people around the world who are riding bikes, there are a few, a handful, really, literally, maybe 10 people who actually make a living writing books about adventure riding. And these people are out riding across the Andes and they're out doing all sorts of crazy bike riding that might be 80 or 90% of the total riding that they do. Those 10 people might have a problem with just having a disc brake and not having a drum brake. And there are some creative solutions, some non-market solutions that those people might want to look at. But for all of the rest of us, for the millions of the rest of us, disc brakes are going to stop you more quickly, more reliably, more of the time in more weather conditions. So I'm a convert. I love my disc brakes. When I get off of one of my bikes with disc brakes, get on one of my bikes with the rim brakes, I have to learn how to brake again. I mean, it's, it's completely different. So disc brakes are the way to go. So if you're looking at a new bike today, take a look at a bike with disc brakes. Highly recommend it. And if you like this video, like it. Click like, click subscribe. If you're looking at this on Facebook, I'd love it if you'd cruise over to YouTube and give me a like on YouTube so that uh, because Facebook and YouTube don't talk to each other all that well, so I don't know if you're looking at this on Facebook. So that would be fantastic, and I'll see you next time. Now my work is done I feel I'm owed some joy Oh, Imogene and Abelard, I'm your homeward boy But there's another one That brings me to your door And a boat she